Recently, I did a video on whether you should become a Webflow template designer and talked real numbers about what's involved and how much you can make. Today, I'm going to take you through the process that I go through to create my Webflow templates. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how you can sell Webflow templates outside of the Webflow marketplace if you don't get in straight away as a template designer. So let's look at the template creation process. I'm going to outline all of the stages I go through, including idea generation, looking for inspiration, concepting the design, developing the template, all of the admin pages to include, and finally marketing the template. So let's jump right in. All right, so firstly, finding ideas for templates. Idea generation can be one of the easiest or hardest parts about being a creative. Some weeks you'll have plenty of new ideas and some weeks you'll have none. But there are a couple of ways that I make it easier for myself to find great ideas for new templates. Firstly, I look on other template marketplaces such as Theme Forest, Creative Market, UI8, or Template Monster. Otherwise, I browse templates of other website builders such as WordPress, Squarespace, Shopify, Simplest, or Cargo. When I look through these marketplaces, I'm jotting down ideas for templates that I haven't seen before in the Webflow marketplace or just in a style that I haven't seen before. This is because in the marketplace, you can either build templates for popular categories where there are already plenty available, such as portfolio sites, or you can fill a gap in the marketplace where there's a unique need that isn't being filled, which can be a little bit harder to think and find. For example, for pets, there are already templates for vets and for pet insurance and for adoption shelters, but none for pet food, dog trainers, dog walkers, or Nyan cat. And so for all of these where there's none available, making a template makes you the go-to person for that category. Now, once I figured out exactly what I wanna do the template for, I move on to finding inspiration. Now, in some ways this can be similar to looking for ideas, but in this stage, I'm looking for real world examples of websites and the category that I'm designing for. I'll usually make it a new tab group for inspiration and add to it as I find great examples. This is a pretty similar process that you might go through when looking for inspiration for building client sites, but you'll be looking for both design style and also the actual pages to include in the website. Restaurant websites will have a certain look to them, but they'll also include pages that not many other kinds of websites do, such as a page for their menu and a page to book a reservation. Through this inspiration process, I'll also go on sites such as Dribbble and Behance and take screenshots of designs that might fit the style that I'm going for. Then I'll collect them all in a Figma file, which is where I'll also create assets for the website too. Designing and developing the template. Once I have enough inspiration, I usually throw around some ideas in Figma to test overall ideas and themes without having to build them. But I don't design everything in Figma first, like I might do with client projects, as this is usually a waste of time and I can still test out ideas once it's in Webflow anyway. Once I have a rough idea of what I'm going for, I'll get straight on to developing the main pages to see how it looks in Webflow and also how it might adapt across the different screen sizes. Now Webflow has quite strict guidelines around the naming system used, and so in building each template, I always try to make the system inside of Webflow as simple as possible. Using a system like FinSuite's client first approach doesn't really fit when creating templates as you have to make most of the sections quite multi-purpose since you can't be exactly sure what content a customer is gonna put in a given section. And so because of this, the naming system that I'll usually use in a template is based around the structure of each element rather than the content inside them. So I'll use grids called two column grid and three column grid, and then I'll also use the 12 column system so that creating new sections or editing sections is super flexible. I'll also use combo classes for sections, spaces, headings and paragraphs, so that when someone uses the template, they can select an element, remove the combo class, and then see the other classes available for that item. So for a section, they can remove the color of the section and then change to a different color. Same with the headings, they can remove the size and change it to a different size easily. All of these styles I'll keep on the style guide page. So when someone uses the template, even if they don't have any instances of a specific combo class across the site, there'll still be a copy available of it so they don't need to worry about accidentally deleting the styles when cleaning up classes. Speaking of the style guide, segue to adding the admin pages. So for each template, there are a couple of admin pages that need to be added to make the template easier for customers to use, which includes the style guide, for keeping all of the classes throughout the site in one place to refer back to, a licenses page for where customers can find where the images throughout the template are sourced from. Instructions is for any instructions for the template, such as for how to use the 12 column system. And change log is for if there's any changes to the template, which in a couple of months will likely be filled up with template designers adding membership functionality to their templates. So finally, once the template is done and it's gone through the submission and approval process, it's available for customers to buy. Now, as I've said previously, there's usually a massive surge of sales as the template first becomes available and appears at the top of the template marketplace page. 
Now this lasts for about a couple of weeks and then the sales start to taper off after that. But past that, I've also seen template designers add their templates to socials, such as Instagram, Dribbble, and Pinterest, and website inspiration sites, such as Landbook, Lapis Ninja, and Landing Folio. Otherwise, there isn't a whole lot more that makes sense to do to market the template. So the time is probably better spent making new templates or learning to juggle. So that's everything that I have on creating Webflow templates. And then in the next video on templates, I'm gonna talk about how you can sell Webflow templates outside of the marketplace, so you can sell them at any price you want. Let me know if you found this helpful or interesting or any other thoughts you have in the comments below. Or if you have any recommendations for future videos, feel free to pop those in the comments too. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.